Hey guys, it's me Sujo over here. Uh, welcome back to another video. So on this video, I'm going to be talking about why is India a difficult country to live in? So uh, firstly, if you're new to my channel, the name of my channel is called uh, Sujo in Vietnam. I've been living in Vietnam for over four years now. Sorry, for over seven years. Um, I was an English teacher before for four and a half years and then I started my online business uh, and I'm also a full-time youtuber so if you're new to my channel welcome to my channel and if you have not yet subscribed to my channel it takes less than two seconds to hit the subscribe button and that way you can support my content so um, yeah so firstly um, I just want to make a quick disclaimer over here. Um, I'm right now here in India and, um, you know, I, 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 I am enjoying my stay and, you know, like the people with whom I'm interacting with, um, the Indian people with whom I do interact with, they're very nice people. I have no issues whatsoever. but. Uh, I just want to talk about certain limitations, a couple of my observations, a <clears throat> couple of my personal observations, uh, which I do see over here during my uh, short stay here in, in India. Uh, I myself am an Indian. Um, I'm a non-residential um, Indian. I'm an NRI. So um, before I start yapping, let me just have a bit of my coffee. <clears throat> All right, so I'm not going to be making this scripted. Um, I don't want to make this scripted. I'm just going to talk from my personal experience. Um, the first thing which kind of pisses me off over here is um, the spitting culture. Um, you know, it's just that sometimes, you know, I take these ride sharing apps, you know, like Uber, um, or I take this. Uh, another app which is called as Ola okay so it's basically the same um, model concept right so I take these ride sharing apps you know sometimes you know I'm assigned with these uh, tuk-tuk drivers you know um, you know we call them as autos right in Thailand it's tuk-tuk but here we call them as autos you know whatever it's more economical you know when you're traveling around the city over here in India thing what kind of pisses me off sometimes is that some of the drivers which are driving um, you know they're constantly spinning around you know like uh, if I'm taking a you know if I'm taking an uber and I see my uber tuk-tuk driver he's like constantly spitting around on the floor on the streets um, and kind of spitting violently you know um, and there's nothing much I can say, you know, because, um, you know, I don't, the last thing I want is, you know, some, someone getting, someone getting pissed off, you know. So, um, but it's like as a passenger, as an Indian passenger taking these ride sharing apps with Ola and Uber, uh, knowing that some of these drivers are constantly spitting on the streets. Firstly, it's very unhygienic. Secondly, I fail to understand how come these these drivers are getting these kind of jobs with these um, with these branded companies, you know, like Uber and Ola. How come they're working in these companies? You know, and on top of it, they got very good ratings, or you know, like someone's got a four point five rating or whatever. Um, so I think the, the lack of personal hygiene definitely lacks over here. Um, and of course, mannerism. Um, speaking of mannerism, that would be my second point. Um, is that not everyone is kind of well mannered out here in India? You know, like you would encounter also rude Indian people. I mean, especially men. You know, they may talk rudely with you if you're going to a shop. You know, if you go to a mom and pop shop or simple mom, they'll, they'll not talk very, you know, they'll just kind of talk a bit rude or something or, you know, let's say, you know, if I get an Amazon delivery guy coming to my home, 
or you know using these e-commerce apps you know because which is a very big boom over here in india right now you know everybody is using online e-commerce you know like they want to order food online they can use apps like swiggy and whatever or you know this amazon uh, of course amazon is an american american brand uh, and of course amazon has huge has a huge stake out here in india but you know apart from its lavish e-commerce website where you get to see a lot of deals and everything where a lot of indians they get tempted to do a lot of shopping online with a lot of these um, celebration discounts and everything but oh man like some of the time you know if i'm going to be ordering some items from amazon or even if they have this amazon grocery or whatever the dudes they'll come in front of my door they'll be super rude they lack kind they kind of act like thugs you know like give the money right now or whatever but or it's just that I, I just fail to understand how come these kind of people are actually working in these kind of companies and doing all these delivery services so the end user the end customer does not have a good experience with the company with the brand name so I'm not sure if the customer would like to order from the same company again, knowing that he's got a very bad, he's got a, he's got a rude treatment from a delivery person from that company. Because there are a lot of e-commerce platforms over here in India, you know, like, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, I do order a lot of food online. My maid, she's been, she's been, she's not been coming for a few days now, you know, she's got her own excuses or whatever. Uh, I mean, of course, she does all the cooking for my lunch and dinner, but um, on her absence, <clears throat> on her absence, I use I am I am actually forced to go to these online apps, order some lunch and dinner or something, and kind of. You know the taxes you know like they add these taxes on top so you say, say for example if a food is costing like two dollars here uh, online but you kind of land up paying like four three three point five dollars or something because of the tax and everything so that's also something which i it's kind of so it's always better to go somewhere outside and just eat directly without paying all that tab, without paying for delivery charges or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, so, uh, so the second point which I spoke about was like the mannerism, right? So, and you know, like, you know, in one of my previous videos, I spoke about, you know, when I went to the supermarket, um, you know, um, a very, uh, you know, a very renowned supermarket out here in India, you know, like, of that customer he didn't have mannerism he shoved my shopping cart or whatever yeah so mannerism is a very big issue out here not everyone has got civ civic mannerism unfortunately um and that's the reason why you know like you know like many you know uh, many you know educated indians you know like they, they want to go somewhere else, you know, they, they find it difficult, you know, they find it difficult. They want to, they want to go somewhere else for a better life, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, you do have a good standard of living over here in India if you have the money. Um, you can live a lavish lifestyle. Um, I like to live a very minimalistic lifestyle. But um, it's just that um, India does lack personal hygiene and it does lack mannerism um, not everyone is well mannered but of course I, I try to be very well mannered I try to follow the rules you know thirdly which I want to talk about would be you know like the traffic and the congestion you know it's like sometimes it's like way above the charts you know like why not have separate lanes for two wheelers and have separate lanes for four wheelers? I mean, instead of just having a lot of clogged traffic and having a lot of congestion, um, this kind of happened in my city. I remember this was like last Sunday. I was going to Starbucks, and I was that that Starbucks joint was like five point six kilometers from my home. So I took that tuk tuk from Uber. And that dude was, he was spitting around violently on the streets. 
and anyways but um man the traffic was really bad you know and like a lot of two wheelers they're going on top of the pedestrians it's just like in it's just like in vietnam but i think vietnam is a bit more organized is more organized when it comes to a chaotic traffic here it's just like you know everyone's going their way zigzag you know so and of course you know there is we do have metros over here and um i haven't tried out the metro system over here in my city but uh, it's just that why not have separate lanes for two wheelers in india for two wheelers and separate lane for for four wheelers and you know have a more organized um control over this um, traffic congestion issues which happen you know so anyway so and of course i must say like sometimes the roads are kind of broken off you know like they got you know it's just i would say like i would say that the infrastructure needs to definitely be ramped up a bit in ter for the road infrastructure and everything because um Still, I do see a lot of potholes and everything. It's kind of dangerous, you know. Somebody's walking around, and you know, so the, like, so it should be a bit more, a bit more organized. You know, there should be a kind of a special focus for you know, just making sure that the roads in smaller cities, in especially in tier two cities here in India, they are, they are they're bettered okay they are further improved you know so yeah so that that would be the other thing you know so coming back to the main point you know like you know of course uh, i spoke about in one of my previous videos that you know there's a lot of unemployment which is here in india which is happening out here in india so i think kind of also makes it a bit difficult, challenging, because um, if somebody does not have a roof over his head and is unemployed and has taken a lot of, you know, like has taken a lot of bank loans from, 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 from India or, you know, like all this EMI and everything, installment payments, buying their flashy iPhones and whatever it is, but you got to pay back that money, you know, and say, you know, tomorrow you don't have a job and you don't have someone to support you financially. It can be a living hell for you as an Indian, because the last thing you want is people coming and asking you, like, you know, you need to pay for the pay for the phone money and all that kind of stuff, you know. So um, I've seen a couple of these YouTube videos about, you know, search some Indian guys, you know, they don't have jobs and they can't pay the installment money and everything. So yeah, it's something, you know, I always believe in this um, philosophy is that know your limits, uh, know how much you can afford, you know, like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, which you can check on my playlist, um, or which you can check on my videos is like, why do Indians love to show off, right? You know, they want to buy they want to buy, you know, those fancy phones, you know, like a lot of gadgets, high-end electronics, uh, and, you know, like, so they'll usually use the credit card or, you know, in EMIs and everything. So, and that, that that's kind of natural when you have a job and when you're getting paid and when you feel like, you know, I'm secure now, you know, I can take these loans, I can buy a nice car, but... Nobody's secure, you know, like say if you lose your job tomorrow or if there's an economic recession, global recession, you know, and if you are laid off or something, I mean, the company can take care of you for one month, can give you an advance payment, advance salary. But after that, what, you know, I mean, is it easy to get a job again? I don't think so. Um, and that's when you really feel the crunch, you know, and especially, you know, if you're unemployed for a long time, like for six months or whatever it is, it can get where, and if you have taken those EMI loans here in India, buying those flashy phones and whatever it is, and used your credit, Indian credit cards and everything, you know, like, 
it's going to be difficult for you, you know. So, um, so that thing you need to know, right? So, um, and the other thing which, you know, I think is kind of um, difficult is, is kind of difficult to absorb is the media, right? The Indian media. And you know, don't get me wrong, I don't watch a lot of Indian news, but the moment I open the Indian TV channels, you know, check some news and everything, it's always negative, negative content, a lot of negative content, right? And, you know, like, you have this bad rape culture out here, um, which is which is still out here in India, you know, and, you know, it's just like a couple of horrific rape crimes. I don't want to get into the details, but, you know, constantly um, it gives a very negative impact you know and you know as an indian i don't feel good about it you know that this is happening in my country you know and we do have we do have psychotic we do have crazy um, um uh, people who don't think right in their head before doing something nasty uh of course they should be hanged for sure uh, within 24 hours uh, of committing these heinous crimes but, you know, it's just that I just wish, um, you know, also it would be a balanced, like balanced news, you know, like with the with what's happening good in the country and also like with the negative and all that. But here in the media, it's always the Indian news channels. It's always most of the time, I would say 90 percent of the time, it's always negative content. So. I don't watch it much, so I prefer to watch some uh, documentary channels or, you know, I think I think BBC is far better. I think CNN, I w CNN is all right, you know, but of course it's too political. I'm not an American person, uh, although I'm an American educated guy, but, um, but it's just that I try to reframe myself from not watching, you know, a lot of negative content on the media. So, um, and of course, you know, like there are many Indians, you know, they, they want to step out of the country and they want to have a better life. They want to have a, you know, they want to settle down and everything. But, you know, life is not, a, is, don't, don't think that the moment you step out of the country and if you plan to settle up somewhere, it's going to be bed of roses for you, you know. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of positive things, uh, of living here in India, you know, like as an Indian, you can avail a lot of facilities, a lot of, um, a lot of benefits you can get, you know, you don't, I don't need to worry about, I don't need to worry about visa. You know, I haven't, uh, you know, I, I'm a citizen of the country. I don't need to worry like. Oh, uh, am I, uh, you know, like, on a, you know, like, unlike, you know, if I was in some other foreign country, I would be thinking about, you know, like, oh, when is my visa expiring or when do I need to exit Vietnam or I don't need to worry about that. You know, I mean, I can stay here. I don't I don't get I don't get looked at. You know, we are all Indians in my country, you know, so like we are all brothers and sisters. So that that privilege is there, you know, like. I can I can freely walk around the roads, go somewhere, you know. Uh, unlike in some countries where you may encounter racism and everything, you know, as a person of color, you know, especially if you go to these um, certain S Southeast Asian countries and everything. I mean, like, and even in North America and all those other countries, you know, like especially Europe and everything, where it's predominantly white white dominated society, so you could encounter a bit of racism and everything, you know. And, you know, like, you know, you have these, you have these um, specific uh, overseas Indians, they come, they come to India and they, like, they, they crib around, you know, they, 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 you know, they say, you know, like, oh, my life is bed of roses overseas, um, you know. Sorry, there's a bit of construction noise going around outside my home, yeah. You know, like my life is bed of roses and everything, but it's not that, you know, it's, um, you know, they try to, you, you know, you have that show off mentality, you know, which, 
which unfortunately most of the Indians they do have uh, and I don't like to show off I like to be as simple as possible and as um, minimalistic as possible right so yeah these are a couple of my intakes you know these are a couple of my thoughts you know I'd love to hear from you that you know like um, are you do you find it challenging sometimes living here in India you know like what are your what are your experiences over here um, or if you have come back to India and if you're an Indian and if you're planning to settle settle down over here uh, what kind of freedom you are experiencing over here you know like I would love to hear from you you know like if you like watching this video make sure to like my video and all the good stuff and if you found my video to be insightful you can always buy me a coffee the link is down in the description below and if you want to start a successful online business I highly recommend you check out the link down in the description below it's an access to a free webinar invite um, with that being said, you guys have a great day. This was me, Sue Joy. Peace out.